If I do my do job the next 10 minutes, you will remember two things. That this is our friend, the radiator, and this is our enemy, the words, oh dear. So let me explain. This is a picture of me when I was little. And yes, all Norwegians are blonde, like this. <laughs> Any of you remember the first time you heard of children starving? I do. I was about this age. I was outraged. It wasn't fair. It couldn't be. I wanted to do something. But then something happened. Little by little, my mind started to defend itself from the emotions that were sparked by things I felt I could not change. It happens to all of us. It's human. It's a way to defend ourselves. It's the same thing when we watch the news and fundraising campaigns. Night after night, we're shown pictures of terrible things, which we feel we can do nothing about. It makes us feel helpless and depressed, in which the only response is, oh dear. <laughs> so the images that were supposed to, us, to make us do something makes us do nothing. These stereotypes create apathy, not action. And it's a big problem. These stereotypes also create a gap between us that are active and have the solution and on the other side, you have them that are passive and have a problem. And it's not true. The problems we are facing in this world are global, and we can only solve them with real and respectful partnerships. So, what could we do, we asked in my organization, SAI, in Norway. We wanted to challenge these negative stereotypes, and this was our contribution. I'm basically heading up a team that's getting Africans together in this time of need for Norway, you know, helping them out. A lot of people aren't aware of what's going on there right now. It's kind of just as bad as poverty, if you ask me. It's sunlight puts smiles on people's faces. People don't ignore starving people, so why should we ignore cold people? Frostbite kills too. Africa. We need to make a difference in Norway. We need to collect our radiators, ship them over there, and spread some warmth, spread some light, and spread some smiles. Say yes to Radiate. So we wanted to mess with people's mind, to get people to think new thoughts. And it was quite a success. If anybody would have told me that we should make a fictional aid campaign and get the attention of tens of millions of people, and the New York Times would write about us and the BBC, I would say, probably you're insane. But that's what happened. With a tiny budget, we managed to get, get worldwide media attention. On YouTube, we have 2.1 million viewers, and it's still rising. 
I think we managed to hit a nerve. People have seen these stereotypes unfold for such a long time. Finally, we got to laugh about it and expose it and strip it naked. We showed just how easy it is to present the country as hopeless and who is the saviors. I think it's time for stop, to stop the pity. It's time for Western self-reflection and treating people with respect. I think this campaign took people by surprise. And we learned how the surprise can be such a strong force. And, and it's stronger than the shock. Because normally, we try to engage students in development issues by telling them how grave or severe a situation is. In the 1960s, the first images of the starving African child created a big shock and a surprise. But starvation, unfortunately, isn't a surprise anymore. And it's getting more and more difficult to shock us. We live in a chaotic world. We see it and we're getting used to it. It's not because we're cynics, but because we're humans. We just want to be happy, so we defend ourselves. This is one of the reasons I believe that the surprise can be a strong force to create curiosity and engagement, while the shock and negative stereotypes can create apathy and can be difficult to act upon. And we go, oh dear, again. In order to engage more people in development issues, I strongly believe we have to be, use more creativity and humor. And a, and a radiator can be a symbol for this. It stands for humor and fiction. And fiction can be a stronger tool to grasp reality than reality itself. This is why we cry when we're at the cinema, but not when we're watching the news. Humor and creativity is shareable. You want to share something when you have good experience with it. And social media gives us great opportunities. Traditional media also loves surprises and visually striking things. Our campaign showed this. When you use creativity, you spark positive motivations and feelings. Laughter is like a gift that you give and you want to give back and to somebody else, and it's really amazing. By inviting people to, into having a revelation themselves, you're putting yourself on the same level as your target group. You're not better, you're not telling them directly what to think, but you're guiding them down a path where they can have a personal experience. The comedian Chris Bliss really explained the magic we've been experiencing with our campaign. He said that when you laugh, the brain releases endorphins in your brain. It makes your defenses go down. So it seduces you to think of things in a new way. So it's kind of like a trick. You think it's just funny, but then you rethink something serious. The opposite effect of this is what I've told you about, that we guard ourselves against what's dreadful. This is the effect uh, the adrenaline has on the brain when we feel anger and fear. So when we're communicating on make, making this world better, we should have two things in mind. The radiator and the words, oh dear. Are we guiding people down a path where they can understand and be engaged? Or are we dragging people down into stereotypes and apathy? Last but not least, let's not take ourselves too seriously. You should try your crazy ideas and let's laugh our way to a better world. <laughs>